you an absolute pardon? Are you genuinely a Because if you've got 3G and you're going, oh, look at my garden, looks amazing. What do you mean 3G in your garden? 3G. Not a signal. No, oh, the grass. The oh, I see. Fake grass. Oh, I see. Yeah. One, two, because there are species that have grown to adapt in those conditions. Yeah, of course. Most people have 3G and yeah, probably 4G. Yeah, or 5G. <laughs> oh, they don't have 5G. Uh, do we not have 5G? Oh, I thought we had 5G yet. We'll talk about it later. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Tom, and we're talking about nerdy stuff. Yeah, environment nerdy stuff. But do you know what? There was a really interesting thing I saw, and it's a project they've got going on in, I believe, the Lake District. Okay. It was either the lakes or Scotland. I can't remember. Might have got them muddled up here. And they were planting trees on the hills. People like to plant trees, yeah. Well, the thing is... We've got all these areas that are not barren. They've got, and we certainly wouldn't want to change the complete kind of ecosystem there. We wouldn't want to completely change it from heathland. You wouldn't want to because there are species that have grown to adapt in those conditions. Yeah, of course. Have you watched Clarkson's Farm? Yes. <laughs> Carry on. But one of the things where, like, you've got, the, you've got Shetland, right? Yeah. Not much on there at all. No. We could plant a lot of trees that would be native and do very, very well in that substrate and in those conditions. Yep. And would promote life. Another bugbear of mine as well at the moment. Bugbear. Oh, it's a real bugbear. <laughs> I mean, and I think you're people talking are talking about bugs and Yeah, and it's if anybody has three G in their garden, um no, there is a word the... for you. What do you mean three G in your garden? Three G. Not a signal. No, the grass, the oh, I see. fake grass. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, yes. You are... <laughs> I was like, I'm sure most people have 3G and probably 4G. Yeah, or 5G. <laughs> no, but, they don't have 5G. Uh, do we not have 5G? Oh, I thought we had 5G yet. We'll talk about it later. Um, no, no, we, we have it, but we don't have it. Oh, uh, right, okay. Is that a nerdy thing you don't know about? It's a nerdy thing. That, yeah, it is. It's a nerdy okay. thing I don't know about, I'll, actually. I'll, I'll roughly explain it to you in yeah, a little bit. I actually want to know about that now. You can watch a very interesting but video. But it's... It's bad because they've literally, we're all wondering, like, growing up. So explain, um, I mean, not just, 3G not for me, because I know, so, I know, hang on, shut up, you're oh, talking sorry. over me. Explain, not for me, because obviously I know, but tell them, what is 3G grass all about? So, 3G grass, you've got artificial grass. People have it because they think, oh, they haven't got to maintain their gardens, right? You can occasionally be like to look at this camera. Looks perfectly. You don't have to, but occasionally that one or that one. Cool. So it weird looks, if you look at that one because you won't. Um, be what's the right word I'm looking for here? Really? It looks nice. People think, oh, it looks nice. There's no maintenance. Not, is it not astroturf? Is it's it pretty turf? much yeah. It's it's fake grass. It's but fake is it grass. real grass? No, it's fake. So it's, it doesn't grow or live. Doesn't grow. Doesn't live. It's fake. It's not astroturf. Though. Not astroturf. It's fake. Just but completely fake grass. It looks like real grass. Looks like real grass. Looks like. Feels like real grass. No. So you know, um, on football pitches now they've got it's not astroturf. They oh, changed no, I it. Do recognise yeah, the term that three G? Yeah. So they put this down and they think, oh, look at my garden. It's lovely and green. Hang on. So Tottenham, they've got a completely moving pitch. Yeah. But they've also because I've worked, I've done a few jobs setting up things there, yeah. and I heard that they have um, the spare slabs of floor, like can fold into under the stadium. where they've got grow lights. So we have the LED lights uh, in the ceiling. That basically maintains the photosynthetic activity within the plant during storage, but LED lights are slightly different light, so it doesn't stimulate too much growth, so we get a lot of type of growth and we have to mow so much. So that must be real grass. Some of it, I'd imagine, is real grass. So I heard there, that they have be. like growing, I think I heard anyway, that they have growing lights in Tottenham. Like, do you imagine the space that must be underneath oh, the stadium? Huge. So this obviously is a car park. Is this the end of the pitch? Yeah, this is the end of the pitch. So when we go into transition, this is uh, the pitch's home, if you like. Well, so the pitch comes in here? Yeah, so basically we just um, remove these rubbers and then the pitch wheels obviously just run down that groove and in she comes. So that whole pitch into yeah. the car park? That'd be massive. Like, They're actually growing and keeping bits green. Because with the so with the three G thing, people have it and think, oh, it's really really nice. Oh, it looks nice. Yeah. Are you a cock? Are you an absolute? Pardon my French, but are you genuinely a cock? Because if you've got three G and you're going, oh, look at my garden, looks amazing. Where are your flowers? You're going to have no insects. You've got a garden that's dead. 
it's dead. There's nothing there. And you're wondering why you've got no birds, no animals, no plants, and we've got no insects, because you've got 3G. It's ridiculous. It should just be banned. And the fact builders... Home builders are putting it in their gardens. One, because we know what they're like. You walk in the back of a new build, it's all full of crap in the back garden. They put a bit of turf down and go, oh, that looks nice. But I guess people are putting it down because it doesn't need to be maintained. Yeah, and it the thing need is, to be looked after. Growing up, my mum and dad had a lovely garden. Yeah. Both of them are green fingered. Both of them were really, really good, right? There was always flowers every time, all the, t- all the different times of year. It's okay. a well-maintained garden with actual flowers. I get that impression and from you. they needed pruning. But then everybody did it years ago. Nobody yeah. left their garden. You certainly didn't just leave your garden to go to crap. I are mean, we talking about people that have massive gardens? Or are we talking about like little town No, village? little town. Just normal little townhouses people are doing it. Where they're just like... I think people yeah. have become... I don't think... That, to be honest, I don't... I get what you're saying. I totally do. And I agree with you. I just think that the people that live in those sorts of houses don't necessarily have a mind to look after a garden. Well, it's not even that. It's that all you need to do, because we're seeing insect species disappear, right? We're seeing a massive drop-off of yeah. the insects. In the UK. And when we're seeing this massive, or right word, invertebrates, they're disappearing. And the thing is, if they go, we're going to lose our birds. Yeah, of course we're going to lose everything else. It's the whole thing about and bees, isn't it? Yeah, My we've got. Bees are if protected. you've got no flowers in your garden... Oh, it looks nice, or it's all, but it's fake. It's not real. It's an illusion. It's literally you're deluding yourself to the fact that that's real, hmm. and you're thinking, "Oh yes, and no, we're going to tell all fine. ten of you right now." It's just I, I don't mean, understand it. I mean, all ten of the people that will watch. Yeah, this, all ten of the people that are going to watch go this episode. Just share it. Share it around. Yeah. And I mean, I get what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying. So I've recently basically I was getting kicked off the field. Because I'm not allowed to live there because I haven't got planning permission. Yep. So I was getting planning permission. They said no. I said, that's nonsense. And I appealed it. And the appeal has now come back. Well, two concessions. One is irrelevant. It's about showing refuse removal. But the second one is I have to... Something, something, something. Consideration for the ecological environment. of the. So I have to basically put some bird boxes out. Yep. Well, that was the example they gave me. Put some bird boxes out. But what I have thought is, well, I've already created... Or she's already created a natural pond. Yep. But then I was talking to my sister's husband, who is a ranger yep. in Nottingham area. Not like a power ranger. Yeah, like an actual a, forest a path ranger. And high, yeah. Paths and highways enforcement or looking after a person ranger. Yeah. So he deals with planning permission, approval yep. and praise, all that sort of stuff. He can translate because those council people that send you about planning permission, all that sort of stuff, they stay words, but the words don't end up m- meaning anything. Yeah. Or making much sense. So I spent a lot of time emailing them back. So what does this mean? Like, I've never dealt with planning permission before sort of mentality. Explain to me what this means. Even the letter said um, proposal to change the use of land from agricultural to residential to permit the siting of a static caravan. Yeah. Concessions, one and two. It didn't say, uh, if you appease these requirements, you can have planning permission on the ground. You have planning permission. It didn't say it. It didn't say that. It just literally stated proposal. And then concessions. It didn't say the proposal will be granted if you adhere to these concessions. No wording like that. Nothing you'd think would be black and white like you should have to have in a legal yeah. document. It's all a lot of left. You'd have to assume that if I wasn't given permission on these grounds, they would have just said refused. Yeah. That's the sort of, you had to go with yeah. that thought. Anyway, one of the quick ways around this was put a pile of logs down so that the insects can come and have a home mm. in the logs. Do you know what's really good? If you've got, you know... um Oh, what do you call it? You know the metal roofing that you stick on sheds? Like corrugated sheet. Yeah, corrugated sheet. sheet, corrugated sheet. Whack that down on the ground. Insects, snakes, everything. I've got a big roll of corrugated steel that I ripped off the side of a container. Yeah, you literally, well, a sheet about the size of this table, bang that down. I mean... On the grass, done. I'm in the corner of a 16-acre field, but I'll put something a bit bigger than that down. But the point is... Oh, no, you don't want it to be too big, though. Oh, I see. You only well, want it to be maybe... Luckily, I've got many options. been thinking about having my own beehive anyway. Yeah. But after I looked into it, I couldn't really do it last year. Do you know another way you could do it is allow some of it to grow up into sort of heathland and meadow. So allow it to overgrow and not manage it for a while. I mean, it does anyway. Oh, no, but you would actually, it's a management strategy you're having on that land. Mm. So when they ask you, oh, why are you doing this? You go, well, actually, I'm choosing to not manage this land for a certain period. 
Like and growing the, wildflower and... Yeah, so then you could bring in and say, for example, if you know a friend has a goat or a few goats, you could bring them to graze. Well, we have horses, which is the only issue like I need certain grazing. Well, that, then that's a management strategy. You can use that horse to help you manage that yeah, land to some extent. They don't... So originally when I was looking into planning permission, the ways out of needing it are establishing permanence. So showing a reason that you have to be there 24-7 to look after various livestock. Horses don't count as livestock, apparently. Wow. Sheep and Sheep goats. Mm. Sheep and goats do. But horses don't count because I was trying to say I need to be here to look after, help my elderly parents look after the farmer. Now my dad's died. Help my elderly mother to look after the horses she can't manage on her own. Condolences, Tom. That's right. Don't worry. Here's a while ago. That's why it's called my dead dad's office. Because I've got a dead dad and it's his office. This was his office where he, I mean, I've changed it all now. That was an old fashioned desk. I've now made it a slightly more useful workflow. That desk goes up and down. Got it for 40 quid off. Oh, face bay, yeah. Is that button. a sit stat? They're amazing. Well, it's the cheapest version of I have to hold the button down, but I then built this desk around it. Oh. And I put some blue lights in it, a bit, 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 bit of material. And that goes down to sitting high. I had to put some feet on it so it's up higher because I don't like sitting down because it's doing my back in. So I just I stand all the time. I think they're amazing. I wanted one for ages. This was 40 quid. Or face bay. That's pretty good. And I put everything up high enough so it was above the plug socket. So when I get to hide them all, you won't see all the plug sockets and all the shit when it's in there. And I've got my 3D printer set up and printing some 3D stuff off it. That's, That's quite cool. cool. It's quite cool. But yeah, so couldn't establish the permanence with the horses. The other thing that annoyed me, the only reason I know about that is because everyone says, oh, the pikeys just get a sheep. And that's how they don't get kicked off land because they have to be there to look after the sheep yeah. that they've just brought on. So fine. In the planning council letter of like refusal in the first place, it says he hasn't demonstrated an agricultural requirement to be there and he has not demonstrated that he is of gypsy or traveller descent. On these grounds, we can refuse him whatever. So basically that's saying that gypsies and traveller descendants somehow are allowed legally to not need planning permission. Wow. And I don't know why that would be other than they've scared so many... Unless there's something to do with the... Of their religion. No, there might be a bylaw. There could be a bylaw somewhere yeah. then. I don't know. I'd but have to look at What's the bylaw that allows a gypsy or a traveller any different rights than an other human? Unless that they've made such a nuisance of themselves that they've just said, fuck it, we'll just let them have There's this. got to be something on allowing them because prior to them living places statically... Yeah. They would move around, so there must be yeah. something within that that hasn't been changed or hasn't been updated hmm. that would allow that. That's all I can think. But prior then to living statically, they would have moved, so never would have needed Planning permission, permission. Exactly. to stay. So that's what I'm wondering. Is there something with that, that they've never needed it prior and there was something written yeah, down? They've never needed it because they've never been building a permanent structure which requires planning permission. Yeah. Or they've never stayed somewhere long enough. So yeah. Stayed for a bit and then fuck off. So I think that there must that allows when it's a caravan to say that it is not a permanent structure. Yeah, like I don't need planning permission to build the caravan because the caravan's there. I need planning permission to change the use of the land from agricultural to, to residential. residential. Yeah. yeah. So it's not building. I've I've not built anything. And uh, but maybe them. they don't change it. Maybe because they've got animals and stuff, they're not actually changing it to residential. They're keeping it as agricultural. Well, that's the thing. So, yeah, if I had established permanence, it would be agricultural. I just have a need to be there as a member of staff to look after animals. But yeah. what I'm saying is the council paper it says I haven't established an agricultural need and I haven't established that I am a gypsy or traveller. So why are gypsies and travellers allowed to say that just for being gypsies and travellers? That's the thing that annoys me. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. Anyway, so now, yeah, I've got, to be the, I've got to do something to encourage the ecological environment. So I, whether it's get bird boxes put in or get I think I can, beehives will be really good one. the thing is I want to do all of these things Yeah, it's not a chore it's like they've gone from saying you can't live there because one you live in a flood zone what are your plans to mitigate uh, health risk from being in yeah. the flood zone two you're living adjacent to a, a heritage building basically yeah. my farm my house has a chimney breast in it that's listed yeah. it's in the centre of the house that is 400 metres away from where my caravan is you can't yeah. even see it and they said, because I'm a heritage, I have to show a heritage plan or how I want, no, an, uh, an impact statement. A heritage impact statement is one. Flood zone, heritage impact statement. And the other one, they said, is because of the remote location, they would, there's no public transport, they would have to rely solely on vehicle, on like cars and things to get them to the amenities. I was like, there's eight houses that live around here. We all have all our lives 
relied on vehicles to get because there's a house that lives further down the back of my field what is this argument saying that i can't have planning permission because i need a car to get to town yeah that's as a nonsense they're just being there was there was loads of nonsense and in the end i sent them back a letter saying look we all live here i don't need a car basically uh flood zone it's a caravan it's sticking out of the ground the flood doesn't bother us i've lived here all my life it's flooded twice badly i mean it's pretty wet yeah but, um there's no impact I, I wrote out my own heritage impact statements i wrote out my own flood risk assessment thing i didn't pay anybody to do anything I wrote it all out myself just in sort of formal language and they come back saying you need to show us where you'd put your refuse bins and um how you'd look after the ecological like encourage the ecological situation so i've gone from needing all this shit to a bird box in a bin and i've already got a wild pond we've put in i want to look into getting beehives yep which See, what I'm saying with the beehives is if you get some wild meadow and heathland started, Mm. if you allow it to happen, then your bees are going to have a selection of flowers. But the way you could also do that is get some plants, some wild plants, that you know are going to flower at different times of the year and plant them sporadically around. So they've got enough there within that field. The only consideration I have with a beehive is that to put it close enough to the caravan to be part of my plan to affect the caravan and then... Might be a bit close to have all those bees. Yeah, that might be too close. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, just bees everywhere. Although I thought bees, if I had fifty of the beehives, it's like I don't need to get a security system in. <laughs> you no one's just have your beehives, and they're just yeah. Who's going to come unless someone tries to steal a beehive? But if they get one, the other forty nine will pounce on them. Yeah, they're pretty screwed then. I think what is, it's, no one's going to sneak into my shed with fifty beehives around. No, no one's going to get any close to that. It's like it's, no, I probably won't get very close to it either. <laughs> It's like, that's where I was going with the whole 3G thing, is that actually people don't allow for nature in their homes anymore. Mm. They're just, and unfortunately, it's not going, oh, it's simpler. They're just lazy. They're just absolute, it's just absolute laziness. Not wanting, when you have a house, you look after it. It's like with a car, you look after it. Mm. It's not something that... We think like that. I would imagine there are people that... (sighs) Think that they can chuck it away. Not so much. I think there are but, people that need a house a bit like they need a pod. Yeah. Right? They don't They don't need or want to have all those things that we have in a home. They need a place to put their stuff. Yeah. And then to go to work or go and do their out-of-the-house life. Yeah. And, Brunches and drinks and all that. Or that even, even, I'm, I'm not even going to be callous and malicious about it. I'm going to say some people just have a life that is maybe yeah, always in the office. Yeah, if they're always in the office, all that, I could fully understand that. But then you could allow your garden to overgrow a little bit and promote nature. But then on the odd occasion, you, you brought somebody home and you want a nice, neat garden. You want a nice, neat garden? <laughs> but you don't have time or know how to use a lawnmower or a hose because you never grew up like that. I mean, I mean, if you never grew up... But the thing is now, where can you find everything to do? If you don't know how to do it, where can you find it now? Well, on the internet. On the internet. You can literally find how to do it. And on I think YouTube. On YouTube. Really simple. Just yeah. look it up. And no, you can. But again, I hear that people live those lives where they can't use... They don't, they don't have time to look up stuff. How do you not... Then your priorities are wrong. Then your priorities are wrong. I hear people don't have time to reply to messages. Oh, that's a load of shit. <laughs> That's literally, if you do not have... No, that- no, you can't sit in that chair and say that because that's the people that sit in that chair are like, they don't have time to reply to messages. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. If you don't, like, I can be bad at replying. Like, I think I took a couple of days to get back to you. Yeah, but because I know you, I, I knew that... I knew you'd reply at some point. You've got a cigarette in your mouth. It's gone out. Give and you're smoking, trying to light it. Yeah, do you know what? I, I did, a while back, I quit... For, uh, when did I quit? About June time. Quit until... July? Oh, no, mid-end of October, I think it was. Okay. And the ADHD medication shortage. Because that's what the medication is. It is generally a stimulant-based medication. It's release dopamine yes. and noradrenaline. ADHD was... Everyone misconstrues it as not being able to pay attention. But it, in actuality, it's paying attention to multiple things at one time just not being able to focus on one thing yeah it's not being able to focus on one thing it's not that you I would want to do something and I'd get started and I'd be like oh there's this I've got to do that and I've got to do that and I've got to do that and nothing would actually get done and it would seem like I'm, I was absolutely fine but you're right I just realised pop- you look like Harry Potter yeah no do you know what somebody has <laughs> I've been told that so many times